Hello and welcome to the WB Mason Coaches Report on GoHofstra.com. I'm Jim Sheehan, joined again by the head men's lacrosse coach of the Hofstra Pride, Seth Tierney. And coach, uh, Pride are off to a 2-0 start following the Utah Utes uh, victory, the, the Hofstra Pride's victory over the uh, Utah Utes on Saturday, 14-10. Uh, a thrilling game. Uh, you know, maybe not for you on the sidelines, but thrilling for the fans. Uh, certainly the turning point, the end of the first half, coming back from a 6-5 short deficit with two goals in the last 15 seconds your yeah. assessment of the game no I mean listen we, we knew uh, certainly we knew we were going to have a challenging time um, you know making sure our guys know that this is not a first year division one program coached team uh, they've got a couple of guys that can, that they can play they got a couple of guys that transferred in they've got a great staff and you know in the world of, that we live in um, sometimes that's uh, easier said than done and uh, so we knew it uh, we talked about it all week uh, you take your hat off to, to Utah um, they're organized they're well coached and uh, and listen it's hard to get division one wins and uh, and we got one on Saturday so Ryan Tierney with four goals and an assist Dylan McIntosh three goals Riley Forte <coughs> who's uh, undergone some adversity with injuries the last two years the goal and two assists, you have to be happy for him. Yeah, I mean, uh, Riley Forte is, 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 is a guy that is just one unbelievable person, right? And uh, the things that he has been through when when he did score, um, and he's very close with Ryan, and they hooked up together with a, uh, a goal and an assist there. When he did score, um, you know, there was just that feeling inside of him, just I'm so proud of this kid, because there's times where he might have even thought about walking away from lacrosse after some of the adversity that he's been through. And now he's back and he just cherishes every moment out there. That turning point at the end of the first half, uh, <laughs> Mark Ellis with a big goal, and then that carried over right into the third quarter yeah. from 7-6, and then all of a sudden it's, it's a it does week, it does week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we watch film, and it wasn't a great film session, and no, really there's no good film sessions, right? I mean, unless you want to make a, a highlight film, there's always things that on a film it makes it look worse, right? Because, you know, you don't, you can't get the emotion of it. You can't get the, the speed of it. Um, but when we watched film, um, there were times, and I'm sure Utah may feel the same way, there are times where we just had, um, we had chances. Uh, Ryan had a layup. James Philbin had a layup. Uh, we maybe hit a pipe. Uh, we had a breakdown defensively, and before you know it, you, those things add up to like a four or five goal swing. Um, and we're just not, you know, on, on Saturday we weren't ready to take advantage of that yet. That has to, we have to work towards that. We're thankful we got the win, and we're two and zero, oh, but we have to work towards that. Both goalies were very good in, yep. in the cages. Uh, Donnelly for Utah, and, and obviously Bobby Casey, another great job. Yeah, another double digit save, yep. you know, thing by Bobby Casey, and and again, you know, he came up to me at halftime. He said, "I got this." Um, you know, so he, you know, there wasn't many goals to blame Bobby Casey. We had a couple breakdowns. They scored a couple, you know, at the end there uh, to make it fourteen ten. And um, you know, again, you have to be obviously there was a there were adverse conditions at least <coughs> the whole weather for both teams as you mentioned. But going from four goals to fourteen goals it was a good jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no question, no question. And uh, you know, we uh, we had a bunch of couple in transition. We had a couple on man up. Um, you know, I think we did a decent job at the face-off X. We've got to make it cleaner a little bit, uh, but, but Herbs did a good job. And, um, you know, we just got to get back to, we got to get back to what Hofstra is good at. And, uh, you know, and, and that's what we're hopeful for this week. And speaking of this week, a big one against the uh, Villanova Wildcats. Mm -hmm. They uh, they had a nice win last week against number one Yale, the defending national champions yes. uh, in overtime, 11-10. Wildcats one and one this year, uh, yeah. with a with a loss to Penn, Penn State. State. Yeah, yeah. I mean they had a, they were I think they were missing a few guys for the Penn State game. Uh, I don't really know what the whole story was, but they were at full I think mostly full strength versus Yale. Uh, Yale's first game I believe, uh, so it's first time them them getting out. And uh, and those Villanova's good. They're a good team. They're well coached. They are hard to scout. They you know they play a, a very loose free flowing offense. Uh, they're pretty aggressive on the DN. They got a goalie that's pretty hot. Uh, they got they can face off. They're 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 a good, really good team, and they deserve you know a high ranking. Uh, certainly after beating Yale. Joey Ficaro, a senior for the Wildcats, with four goals. Keegan Khan with four goals also. So they they can 
do some scoring from no, different places. places. They got they got a bunch of guys out there that can shoot it. They dodge it hard. They they use picks. They they make believe they're going to use a pick and don't use a pick. They are they got it all. So um, our scout team this week is you know they're trying to figure out what they can simulate to help us prepare. And the problem is it's really hard to scout them. But again, great opportunity for our team to go down there. Uh, and uh, again, we've got a, a full week of practice. We got to get under our belt. And we'll get rolling. What do we have to be to be successful this week? Yeah, I mean, we, regardless of being successful on the scoreboard, we got to take a step. And, uh, and for some of it, we took a step versus Utah. For some of it, we didn't. And if you don't take a step forward, then you're taking a step backwards. And we need, you know, we need for these young guys to, to understand the value of a possession, how to read situations, when to push it, when not to push it. Uh, we thought that our short stick team middies did a great job of getting up and out, but we didn't cash in on, on a lot of them. And we need to uh, we need to tighten that up this week. Um, and, and again, we need we need the game. We need to play fast, but we need to think slow. A couple of milestones the other day against Utah. Uh, your son Ryan Tierney with his 100th career point. Uh, halfway through his career, a little bit over halfway through his career, uh, he's uh, halfway through to the school record. But a lot of things can happen. Let's not put the, yeah. the cart before the horse. Yeah, I mean, again, and and I appreciate you bringing it up. But you know, uh, you know as a as a dad, I sent him a text. As a dad slash coach, so what took so long, right? I mean, so uh, that didn't go over well with uh, with the rest of the family. Um, he he took it the right way. Uh, awfully proud of him. Uh, again, uh, my goal for Ryan is for him to to have an extremely uh, fun, uh, rewarding career here at Hofstra, and uh, let the game come to him. He obviously draws some attention, um, and uh, and he's done a good job thus far. In addition to Ryan, uh, Brian Herbert with a goal, uh, 18 wins in the face-off X. Uh, Pretty good. We had a couple of other first, Riley right. Forte, first career Riles goal. Abroad, Nick Williams, I Williams, think he got yeah. his first got his, got his first goal. Um, you know, a couple of new guys got some playing time, and, uh, you know, all that stuff is good. The baby pride to come along. We're getting there. We're getting there. Good luck this week against the Wildcats. Hofstra and Villanova this Saturday, February 23rd at Villanova Stadium in Villanova, Pennsylvania. Game time, 12 o'clock. And we thank you for watching the WB Mason Coaches Report on GoHofter.com.